Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Kuri 24E4, which, as the name implies, it's a 24-inch monitor, which in this case has a 165Hz refresh rate, which is going to be definitely faster than the average 60Hz, making it more ideal for things like gaming, movement is just going to seem more smooth on this particular display. And for that 165Hz spec, it also is relatively attractive in terms of pricing, often goes on sale with coupon for around 150 bucks, which really is not bad. It is also FreeSync compatible and also claims to have not as noticeable flickering going on, so if your eyes are more sensitive to this type of stuff, it should become more of a smooth picture as you are staring at the screen. It supports two full-size HDMI ports as well as a display port. As far as the color accuracy is concerned, it's rated to be 85% accurate in terms of the DPI P3 color gamut. It's relatively wide, but arguably some of the creator-centric monitors can even get into the 90% range and higher. Uh, so if you want something with extreme color accuracy, primarily for things like Photoshop and, again, photo editing, that's not necessarily its strongest selling point, but it's already good enough. This is primarily without high refresh rate. There's also the base itself, which is constructed out of alloy and polycarbonate plastic. It's weighted, so the monitor is not going to tip over. Just slide it into the adapter and you're ready to go with soft touch feet. That prevents it from sliding around. You also find a bundled free HDMI cable, a pretty thoughtful extra, along with just a quick user guide that also tells you how to attach on the stand, so it should take just a minute or two to pop on there. It's not a very complex assembly at all, but will require just uh, one or two screws. If you want to, again, hang it onto the wall without using the stand, that is, of course, one other option, but you would have to use your own VESA wall mount. Just a quick look at the monitor before we attach it onto the stand. A few impressions include that it is a matte surface, so it's going to not reflect as much light, which makes sense considering it's a gaming monitor, and we do have very slim bezels, which will become more apparent when we flick it on with a slightly larger chin at the bottom there with the Kuri logo, and the controls are baked underneath the display. These are the buttons that you can press down on, they're pretty tactile and clicky. And the back of the monitor also features the I.O., including the aforementioned HDMI, display port, audio, and power. It is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic, it's slightly curved, but that's only the back here. The actual display is still a flat panel on this particular model. Alright, so here's what the monitor looks like when it attaches onto the stand, so it definitely elevates the height a little bit to become a bit more comfortable, and also allows you to now further tilt the angle, again up to 15 degrees, forwards and backwards per your liking. Again, the resolution of this monitor is technically capped at 1080p, so it's not really a 4K or even a 2K display, so if you want something that has more sharpness and detail, it's also where you may have to pay a little bit more. For this, it's primarily giving you faster refresh rate at this low price uh, has been the kind of main priority of this particular model, and also looking quite modern thanks to those slim bezels. And generally speaking, colors are still pretty vibrant, maybe not quite as deep as if it was using true AMOLED or OLED, but again, we wouldn't be talking about the same price range of only around 100 to 150 bucks if it was packing in some of those other uh, built-in features. Blacks could technically be a little bit darker, but that's always going to be a trade-off of having a matte display versus a glossy one, which can technically produce just a little bit more contrast. But still, I think it's probably worthwhile, considering uh, it's just going to be much more visible when you have a bit of lighting around you. Viewing angles are in fact quite good, as we can see here, so I can tilt the screen and everything still becomes fully visible. Well, one other thing to keep in mind here is that this display does not have a built-in speaker, so sound is not going to come out from here. You really do have to plug in the headphones or use an external, let's say, Bluetooth speaker. Other adjustments that we can make on the monitor itself, we can tap on the mode key here to change between some of the different uh, selections, including a dedicated gaming menu, which we can calibrate things like turn on or off the FreeSync functionality. Brightness, contrast can also be fine-tuned. Options, including movie, so this one will actually slightly lower the brightness a little bit, interestingly enough, uh, maybe to make your eyes a little more comfortable, but in my viewing experience here, it actually seems to be not quite as saturated. FPS mode, which actually is a little bit more vibrant, that's really one of the gaming modes uh, for higher refresh rate, and things just seem a little bit smoother there. And RTS mode, we can also try out here, just making some small granular adjustments. Eye saver mode on here, this is the one which prevents any flickering, as well as lower the brightness even more. In fact, turning off some of the 
colors, including a blue light filter, just to make it a little more pleasant on your eyes if you're staring at it for longer sessions. Under color temperature, we can also further adjust things to make it warm, cooler, or more accurate per DCI-P3 standards. Properties like red, green, and blue can also be further adjusted, whether it's 16x9, 4x3, or just an auto mode can all be found, as well as different input sources. So whether you want to connect this to the first HDMI or second one, these can also be turned back and forth. It's really no surprise that this monitor does great when it comes to doing gaming with, uh, thanks to that minimal bezels and the ultra fast refresh rate, which is in fact very smooth, I have to admit. It's gonna just seem a bit more immersive, things are more fluid as animations are happening, and it just becomes a little bit more of a joy to use. Again, it may not be necessarily the highest resolution, but it still gives you this nice immersive experience uh, that is colorful and for the most part, very good, I think, for this price range. And again, just plug and play, whether it's a computer on Windows or Mac, that might be kind of your best bet if you want to take advantage of some of the FreeSync capabilities, especially if you have an AMD Ryzen-powered chip on your machine. You don't really have to spend an arm or a leg to get a very comfortable experience for gaming, for entertainment, multimedia. It all does quite well and really does improve the experience uh, when you are plugged into your computer, when you're working at home. Now, obviously, though, this is still a kind of stay in one spot monitor or really around the house. It's not meant for real portable usage. So one of the other alternatives that we've seen in the past have been the kind of compact monitors, which you can take with you into your backpack, the portable displays. Uh, those will often be found at a similar price, usually with screen sizes of 13 inches to 15.6 inches. So much smaller than this guy, but those portable monitors will usually sell at a similar price. And the reason is just because they're thinner and they can be more compact. But if you're not someone that is really going to always work on the go, then this should be the better value because of the higher refresh rate and just larger display making a difference in terms of adding more immersiveness to the content of your watching. And just ending things by taking a look at some other more day-to-day -day usage applications of this monitor, whether it's again reading back articles, things are still looking quite good, even fine details and smaller text. Again, it's not going to be pin sharp if we do try and zoom all the way in, you can still make out maybe a little bit of pixelation there just because of, again, the full HD res on a larger panel, but still colors are very vibrant, um, especially considering the matte texture of this display, and it just looks very modern and immersive, although it doesn't necessarily stand out compared to some of the competitors. Uh, for one, the placement of the HDMI ports on the back, it works fine, primarily in this display mode, but if you are hanging it onto the wall, it can be a little hard to reach. So maybe putting it onto the base, along with maybe some additional fancier touches, whether it's touch sensitivity, having a built-in speaker, even though, again, speakers on monitors are never gonna be the most immersive or high quality, I think at least having it is kind of the norm in most of these cases. So there's definitely a few of those areas where maybe some slight quirks can be further optimized. Very strong option, I'd say, if you are kind of on a budget, but still are looking for a fast refresh rate monitor, this one here at 24 inches. You can check out more details of interest in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.